The anima mundi is, according to several systems of thought, an intrinsic connection between all living things on the planet, which relates to the world in much the same way as the soul is connected to the human body. Although the concept of the anima mundi originated in classical antiquity, similar ideas can be found in the thoughts of later European philosophers such as those of Spinoza, Leibniz, Kant, Schelling, and Hegel, particularly in his concept of Weltgeist. The Stoics believed it to be the only vital force in the universe. They identified anima mundi as pneuma. Plato adhered to this idea, identifying the universe as a living being the concept known as world soul. Plato's dialogue Timaeus describes this living cosmos as being built by the demiurge constructed as to be self-identical and intelligible to reason, according to a rational pattern expressed in mathematical principles and Pythagorean ratios describing the structure of the cosmos, and particularly the motions of the seven classical planets. Following Plato, the anima mundi became an important component in Neoplatonic cosmology, often including its close relationship to the Demiurge and the Seven Planets. The anima mundi was borrowed from Platonist philosophy into several Gnostic sects as world soul. In Manichaeism, the anima mundi was also called the light soul and the living soul, contrasting it with matter, which was associated with lifelessness and death and within which the anima mundi was imprisoned. The anima mundi was personified as the suffering Jesus who, like the historical Jesus, was depicted as being crucified in the world. This mystica crux officio was present all material things, including the skies, soil, and trees of the world, as expressed in the Coptic Manichaean Psalms. Similar concepts in Eastern philosophy include the Brahman, Purusha, and Paramatman of Hinduism, and key in the Chinese school of naturalists, Taoism, and Neo-Confucianism. The End